Hello again there folks, Lone Adventurer here. Thanks very much for stumbling your way upon my channel and joining me for another game design video. This is uh, part of an ongoing series as I tentatively dip my toes in the pool of game design. I'm not sure that was a good analogy. So this is the second video in which I'm going to be discussing the designing creation of my game New York Zombies. There'll be a link up in the corner of the screen right about now to the first uh, video in which I discuss the design of this game. And if you're curious to see the uh, design videos for my first game, Village Emporium, there'll be a link down in the description below to the first part. So you can go all the way back to the beginning. Now this game has come along pretty quickly, partly because I have kept the design very very simple and partly because I've been on holiday from my real job this week and that means I've had time to um, obsess over this little design and push it along at a speed that I otherwise would not have been able to achieve. So here we are. As predicted it is a game that fits on a single sheet of paper so we have got the rules detailed on this side, character creation and rules. And then on the other side, we've got the locations and the final encounter. So I have worked hard to keep this game simple enough that I can explain it in this small amount of space. And that has been pretty challenging. It has required quite a bit of rewriting just to get the rules down whilst keeping them as easy to understand as possible. I have had some really good play testers. Thank you so much to all of you who have been playing the game over the last few days and feeding back to me all sorts of brilliant uh, feedback. That feedback has resulted in quite a few changes, some of them quite small, some of them fairly significant. The game, it turns out, as it stood, was probably a little bit too difficult, so I have taken some steps to mitigate that a little bit, but I've been trying to do it in small gradual stages so that we sort of work towards the game being uh, of balanced to a point where it can be defeated you can win but it doesn't happen all the time hopefully i have got there we will see it's been a couple of days since i've actually played the game myself i plan on playing it this evening. So I'm going to keep this video quite short. I will just run over the changes that I have made. Yeah, and, th and then um, probably not too long after I release this video, I will launch the game and I'll do a little playthrough video myself so you can see how the game plays. But yeah, as you can see, I spent a little bit of time laying the game out uh, in uh, Affinity Publisher. I'm not a professional or even a good amateur desktop publisher user, but I'm pretty pleased with where I have got this. I've tried to keep the design as clean as possible. I picked one uh, font for the title text, one font for the body text, I used this really cool blood spatter that I found on itch.io. That was free. I'll try and remember to include some links on the itch.io page and drive through RPG page so that that um, receives some credit. The designer of that receives some credit. That's pretty cool. There's also a, I'm not sure it comes out well enough, but there's a New York skyline down at the bottom here. I wanted to include a tiny bit more visual, but I wanted it to uh, not take up any room, so it's behind the text, and I've sort of muted it so that it doesn't make the text too difficult to read, but I think possibly it needs to pop out a little bit more. 
maybe I'll make some more adjustments there. Uh, yeah, and, and, and that's that's it really in terms of the design. I hope you like how it looks. I also made a character sheet this evening. I've kept that super simple. It's got uh, uh, the name, the job, the stats, an HP spot, and then spots to track uh, your kills because every time you get five kills you're able to increase one of your stats so you need to track each five kills infection tracker so that if you get infected you can track uh, you can count down i guess how many uh, uh, rounds you have before you become zombified and then you've got a risk level tracker because you need to track something called risk level in each location and then before you move on to the next location, you have to fight a certain number of zombies based upon your risk level, and then that gets reset, and then an area to track items. Someone suggested limiting the number of items to add a little bit more of a pain point. Uh, if you have 10 items, you have to make a decision about what you're going to take, what you're going to leave. I'm not sure whether that's necessary. That might be something to introduce. So I'm just going to go over the main changes that have been made based on playtesting and you know other small changes I've made. But these, these are mostly based on playtesting. I'm not going to mention any playtesters by name simply because I haven't recorded who suggested what changes. But you know who you are and I really appreciate your ideas, particularly these first uh, two things. The first major suggestion that I took on board was changing the character creation approach. Now originally for character creation what we had was um, you picked a job and you picked a location where you've been laying low. The job gave you a advantage in a particular area and the location you've been laying low gave you your items. Now I'd always planned to add special abilities to the job types but I never got around to doing that and then your stats you had eight points I believe it was and you assigned those yourself now what that allowed you to do was to uh, I think too strategically set your strength and or presence and pair that up easily with a weapon so you could set your strength to four and then get yourself a fire axe by starting in the deli. And I think giving the player that degree of control meant that you were able to really fine tune your character to a degree where other options were uh, could be ignored. So what, what I've changed it to, as I said at the suggestion of a playtester, is the stats are set by the job that you select. So there's now six jobs rather than three. I've done away with starting locations and the job that you pick sets your stats. Now these might need some fine tuning. I just sort of eyeballed this really. So the cabbie for example starts with two strength, one agility, one presence, two toughness, three knowledge. Items knife and ration. And then for the special ability, once per location, you may immediately leave an event or combat encounter, ignoring all effects. I have had a couple of people say that might be the most powerful ability, so that might need to be toned down a little bit. But then the other characters, the other jobs, have uh, stats that are balanced differently, different special abilities, different starting items. So it's very likely that one or two of these are better than the others, but I have tried to make them all different and all interesting, and that's that's where we're at with that for the time being. Now the other main change, I think, is the adjustment of the, uh, what, am I, what have I been calling this, the travel table. And it's a small adjustment, but I, th I hope it's gonna make a big difference. Originally, you rolled a D6 each round, and if you rolled a one or a two, you increase the risk level, which increases the number of zombies you have to face. A two or a three, uh, sorry, a three or a four would have given you a combat encounter, and a five or a six, an event. Now, the playtester who suggested 
this change suggested it uh, to mitigate an issue that I had already been aware of and I think I just needed someone else to point it out to me. So I knew this was a shortcoming but I was kind of choosing to ignore it because I didn't really want to deal with it. And the issue that it, that I wasn't facing up to was related to the stats. Strength is used primarily for melee attack, agility for defence, presence for ranged attacks, and toughness and knowledge. Yes, toughness is used to set your initial HP, but other than that, toughness and knowledge were only being used in the events. And they weren't being used that much in the events, which meant that those stats were less important and therefore inevitably considered less during character creation and in the new version when picking your character. So in order to uh, fix that, first of all, we have changed the travel table here so that a 4, 5 or 6 rather than just a 5 or 6 results in an event. So that means you get slightly more events or maybe significantly more events and therefore you're going to be placed in a position where presence and knowledge are used more frequently. And I've just tried to make sure that those stats are used more frequently um, and I think I've probably got a little bit more tweaking of that to do before it's ready. But anyway, that, that was the hope there. I feel like I've waffled a little bit. Let me just have a look at my uh, change log here to see what else I've done. I, I've sort of just tried to um, make it a little bit easier, I think. I think I uh, increased the effectiveness of some of the weapons. I decreased the the challenge of some of the enemies. I think I might have increased the amount of ammo opportunities there are. Um, lots of little tweaks like that. It's mainly little tweaks. Yeah, I changed it so that you get more HP at the start of the game. Um, lots of small things, like I removed the pretzels item uh, and just um, replaced them with rations. I replaced all reference to ammo and bullets with ammo cans so that it's a bit more consistent. Lots of changes just to make everything more consistent. Little clarifications like the zombies you face between locations don't add to your kill tracker. Making sure it's clear that lock picks are a one-time use. Loads of little bits and pieces like that. And I think I've got it to a fairly decent place. I'm happy with it. I think it's a cool little game. It will probably need a little bit of balancing. I'm thinking of putting together a supplementary sheet with a few little extra rules. Maybe uh, a hard mode and an easy mode so you can make it harder or easier depending upon how much of a glutton for punishment you are or how much you like to glide more smoothly through a game and just enjoy the experience. But there you go. It's come on a little bit. I think it's really close to being ready to put out there, at least as a version 1 that I will tweak a little bit further. And obviously that's the benefit of releasing games digitally. I can put it out there and then just make sure people are aware when I release uh, updates to it. Let me know what you think. Do you like the look of it? Are you looking forward to playing it? Hopefully, you know, one or two of you are. The playtesters seem to have been enjoying it. Thank you so much to the playtesters. It would not have gotten to this point without their feedback. Um, I really do appreciate the time they've spent playing this game. A number of them have clearly played the game more than I have now, uh, which is cool, and people seem to be enjoying it. So there you go. New York Zombies coming soon to a digital platform near you. If you've made it this far, thanks very much for watching, and I will see you, uh, well, next time I see you with New York Zombies, I will hopefully be playing the game for your viewing pleasure. Catch you in that one, folks. Bye for now.